my time with Stormland has brought about a lot of conflicting emotions. Entertained, but disappointed. Intrigued, but frustrated. Developed by Insomniac Games exclusively for Oculus Rift and published by Oculus Studios, Stormland is a first-person action-adventure set in an open world, though it's not exactly the kind of open world you might be thinking of. Stormland is pervaded by, if not at least what feels like, an emphasis on recycled content as opposed to a fully flushed out story and deeper dives into its excellent gameplay. A lot of Stormland's story is disassembled, delegated to audio logs that fill in narrative gaps, and both side and main missions are almost entirely the busy work you'd find in other open worlds. Collect X number of these, or defeat X number of enemies with this weapon. The sights and sounds are great, Stormland's world is nebulous and dreamlike. It stopped me in my tracks a few times, and its soundtrack weaves between beautiful ambient mixes and driving electronic beats. While Stormland has provided some of the coolest gameplay moments I've experienced in VR, and even at a price of $39.99, it often feels hollow, an interesting idea left unfinished. Detecting a mysterious signal emanating from a planet in the Tau Ceti star system, a human expedition tracks the signal to a planet they call Avalon. You play as Vesper, silent protagonist and android who took part in the expedition. Vesper awakens to find its campsite destroyed, fellow androids scattered across Avalon, and human counterparts nowhere to be found. The expedition, as you'll learn, was attacked by the Tempest, an evil group of androids with sinister motives. Once awake, Vesper sets out to to stop the Tempest, search for the lost humans, and uncover Avalon's secrets. Three separate realms form the bulk of Stormland's explorable world, each with unique biomes. But rather than single connected landmasses, Stormland's realms are archipelagos, islands suspended in a sea of clouds. Realms are open-ended and fully explorable as soon as you arrive, and islands are approachable from any direction. Vesper can climb most objects, be it buildings, ruins, or mountains, giving you numerous options to get where you're going. Some islands may be empty with few resources and little to see. Other islands may have plenty of resources or an enemy encampment. Like the Far Cries and Metal Gear Solids before it, in Stormland, how you assault enemy positions or approach objectives is up to you. Stormland's first portion, lasting anywhere between 5 and 6 hours, is the main story. This is where you'll see most of the story sequences, meet Stormland's characters, and explore each of the three realms for the first time. Each realm works the same way. You explore at your leisure, gather resources, and eventually activate a storm portal, which transports you to the next realm. Completing the main story sets you up for Stormland's quasi-endgame content called The Cycle. This is where things get a little more complicated. The Cycle resets the world and gives you the option to reset certain upgrades, allowing you to restart the game with a higher power ceiling. It's a concept similar to New Game Plus. In the cycling world, your new end goal is to conquer the Tempest Command Tower, a stronghold guarded by numerous high-level enemies. To do this, you'll go through each realm again, complete missions to unlock their storm portals, and assault the Tempest Command Tower at the end. Once you've beaten the main story and enter the cycling world, conquering the Tempest Command Tower and resetting your upgrades is optional, but the cycle happens on a weekly basis at the same time for all players globally. It changes, among other things, the layout and position of islands and minor Tempest strongholds. During any given cycle, all players experience and see the same map. Your upgrades and the cycling world go hand in hand, and there are two resources you'll need to upgrade Vesper. Aeon Buds and Growth. Aeon Buds are rare, purplish plants you'll occasionally find out in the world and acquire by completing missions. Growth are points you get mainly by scanning things, done by activating your scanner and pointing your cursor at items with blue outlines. The more times you conquer the Tempest Command Tower and choose to reset Vesper, increases how strong you can make Vesper in the long run through multiple cycles. You'll be traveling back and forth between islands quite a bit, but rather than a more traditional fast traveling system, Stormland uses Slipstream, a fast-paced glide across the peaks and troughs of Avalon's cloudy sea. Point your arms in the direction you want to go, press the grip buttons, and you slide across the surface of Avalon's clouds. Blue buoys rise up, offering speed boosts, barring you don't ram into them directly. To slow down, you bring your hands closer to your body. Slipstream has become something I really look forward to. Seeing an 
objective marker pop up across the map isn't an annoyance, it's exciting and signals a change of pace. There's no combat out on the clouds, it's only you and the waves, a strange mix of high speed, relaxed surfing. Gliding through the air works in a similar fashion that Slipstream does. Pointing your hands at the ground slows you down and moves you downward, while pointing your hands straight out keeps your glide going for as long as it can. It's responsive and makes for some fantastic and unique traversal. Between Slipstream, climbing, and combat, Stormland's gameplay is dynamic, wholly enjoyable, and extremely active. Seldom are you standing still for more than a few minutes. Weapons are stored on your sides and on your back, and your chest has slots for items like health canisters or grenades. To use canisters, which may contain health or resources, you physically rip the lid off. For grenades, you press a button. Weapons and grenades can be salvaged for resources and ammo, done by pulling them apart just like you would with canisters. There's no reloading in Stormland. Weapons have a maximum ammo count, and you can fire them until they're empty. So if you're running low on ammo for your SMG, you can either scavenge an SMG from somewhere in the world and break it apart for ammo, or find a workbench, which are plentiful throughout the realms. At workbenches, you'll use alloy, a common resource, to restock on health and ammo, craft grenades, and even craft weapons. Vesper also has different arm abilities, all of which you'll craft and switch between at workbenches. Vesper's static pulse arm stuns enemies and leaves them defenseless, while the invisibility arm turns Vesper, well, invisible, letting you sneak past enemies without them seeing and attacking you. A really neat 3D compass sitting on the back of your hand acts as your mini-map. Open the world map and it's like you're standing at a 3D map table. This is where you'll get a better look at islands and set custom markers. Moving through Stormland is intensive. You'll be sprinting, jumping, and climbing, and there aren't a lot of options for players who prefer slower VR movement, though considering how you're moving, it's understandable why. Stormland does, however, have a few comfort options, and items you reach for will fly into your hand even if you're a few feet away, so picking things up isn't too much of a hassle either. After a few hours of learning how to move and buying some upgrades, which you do at mod stations, Stormland lets you move unlike any VR game I've played. You'll bound across maps, descend onto unaware enemies with a shield in one hand and weapon in the other. Stormland is the closest I've felt to a real Iron Man action fantasy. Invite a friend and you can explore and take on the Tempest together. Resources you collect are shared, and after an early side quest, you can play through the main story together, though it's recommended players farther in the story join players who are earlier in the story. It's interesting in VR to watch how developers handle tasks like dropping items or how to store items on your person. Stormland is pretty player friendly in this regard. If you accidentally let go of a weapon you had stored at your hip, it'll hover in front of you and after a second or two, slide back into where you had it. If you want to place a weapon you have in your right hand into your right handed holster and your right handed holster is occupied, you let that weapon go near the holster like normal and the other weapon unequips itself, hovers for a second, and drops to the ground. There were times I had trouble getting Vesper to distinguish between a surface I was climbing and a weapon I needed to grab. The distance at which you can grab items occasionally makes for some clumsy moments where you're trying to toss things to the side and make room for items you want. Vesper's upgrades and arm abilities provide a decent amount of different builds. Stormland even has some light stealth if you're so inclined. Your scanner reveals enemies through objects, and enemies have detection meters that fill when they see you. Quietly sneak up behind most enemies, and there are health canisters you can physically rip from their backs. Pulling the canister discreetly destroys them, and nets you an extra canister. While sneaking, enemies appear with a green outline around them. If you've made them cautious, the line turns yellow, and once they're aware and attack, Attacking, it's red. It's standard stealth stuff like throwing rocks to distract enemies or tall grass you can sneak through and hide in. Mechanics light enough to ambush enemies but not necessarily designed to be full-fledged stealth action. Stormland's combat is, quite frankly, really fun. Mixed with Vesper's ability to climb and glide, and you're hanging off ledges, using one arm to lift yourself over cover and the other arm to return fire. Or maybe you fling yourself up from the ledge and come down, weapons drawn. You're able to dual wield any and all weapons, and each weapon comes with an alternate fire mode, activated by holding it with two hands, making them more accurate or activating scopes. For the most part, I found myself content one 
one-handing weapons and using Vesper's handy shield to block incoming fire. Weapons point a laser at what you're targeting, though it can be tricky to see sometimes. Regardless, I was usually able to aim my weapons without too much of a hassle. The caveat here is combat's limited depth. In that first 5-6 to six hour sequence, you'll see just about every weapon and enemy type Stormland has to offer. As great as the combat is, Stormland doesn't build on itself as much as its dynamic mechanics might make you think it can. It's a sentiment I think can sum up a lot of my reservations with Stormland. I can't shake a feeling there was a lot left on the table here. It combines the skeleton of a live service with the outline of an open world action adventure, but fails to capitalize on its own strengths, resulting in a familiar open world foundation that doesn't have much built on top of it. Stormland is a good VR experience that ultimately left me wishing for more.